I wish death upon you. That's exactly how I felt exactly two days ago when I came face to face with the devil. Oh no, I kid you not. I went face to face and toe to toe with the actual devil. I looked her in the eye and I said, no ways, no ways. I'm a child of God, Mina. I'm a child of powerful, amazing, phenomenal ancestors. I will not take this. I refuse to continue to take this because I took it when I was defenseless, when I was silenced because I had no other option but to take it. I had no other option but to respect my elders even though they didn't respect me. One thing people need to understand about respect, it has absolutely nothing to do with age. Everybody deserves common respect but the minute that respect is violated all bets are off no matter how old you are respect is earned and we need to stop teaching our children to respect elders who violate them to respect elders who don't respect them to respect elders simply because they are elders, but their actions speak otherwise. What is there to respect? How do you respect someone who abuses you? How do you respect someone who physically, verbally, emotionally, psychologically, mentally abuses you throughout your childhood? The most crucial stage of your life where you are malleable where you are like a sponge where you absorb everything that is said and everything that is done to you how do you respect people who take advantage of an innocent soul how do you respect people who look an innocent soul in the eyes and say i wish death upon you I don't care about you. If you were to die, I would rejoice. I speak doom upon your future. I pray that nothing ever goes your way. How do you respect that? How would you deal with that? This goes for everybody with a child. Even if you don't have a child, picture yourself in that position. Because I know for a fact that you talk to my child sideways, Nji. You spew any kind of negativity in the presence, let alone to my child. But you spew any kind of negativity in the presence of my child. I am removing my child from that situation. I am removing my child from that environment. I am removing my child from you. Because no child should ever experience that or witness that toxicity. No child should think that kind of behavior is normal. Child abuse is unforgivable. There is no justification. There is no explanation. There is no excuse for child abuse. But because we are decent human beings, we are godly beings who are surrounded by angels who want everything to run smoothly, to go accordingly, who want peace, love and light amongst people, all people, especially when these people are related. We give people an opportunity to explain themselves. 
to open up and let us know what exactly pushed you to that extent. What in your mind made it okay for you to spew such hatred, such negativity, such toxicity in the presence of a child or to a child directly? What made you think that was okay? What made you think that that child would continue on with their life and forget that? Or let's say the child doesn't forget it and you know that they haven't forgotten it, but what in your mind tells you that this child will forgive that when there are no explanations that have been given for that behavior, even though there's no explanation that could ever be valid, first of all. But yeah, why not humble yourself? Why not show the respect that you ever so often speak of? Because you are in the wrong. Why not humble yourself and explain that this, that, and the third happened? This, that, and the third were the causes of this kind of behavior and apologize. If you're too prideful, if you're too stubborn to do so, change your behavior. Because the best apology is changed behavior. But you refuse to change that as well. And you expect that that child, who is now a grown woman, is going to just accept anything. Is going to just move past such vile things that were done to them. And pretend that everything is okay? How? How? Explain to me how in your right state of mind, as a human being, as an adult, you think that you can abuse and almost off a child. And when you are given an opportunity to state why that ever went down, you say, what makes you think I hate you? I treated all the other children very well. No other child has ever complained about me and my actions. Forgetting that I'm not any other child, I am me. These are my experiences. This is my truth and you know this but you refuse to be honest. There's nothing, I, I just, I can't stomach a liar. I can't stomach a person who doesn't take accountability for their actions. I mean, what's the point? We're not gonna go anywhere. If we're gonna open up, if we want forgiveness and healing, and if we want to move forward and actually open up pathways that will allow our blessings to manifest, we need to be honest no matter how much it hurts no matter how much you think you are in the right you need to relax you don't get to minimize someone's pain especially when you're the cause of that pain you don't get to demand respect from your victim the mere fact that this victim, even though I'm no victim, I'm a survivor. The mere fact that this person is giving you an opportunity to even speak to them should be an honor and a privilege. Not because of where they are in life. Not because of what they have attained. Because people like to make it seem like, oh, you're not giving me your ear. Because you now have this, that, and the third. Or because now you are here, here, and there. Or because now you have access to this, that, and the third. Never! One thing about me, I'm a godly being. I love all people and I see God in everybody. I respect everybody, no matter who you are, how old you are, what you do, what you have, where you live, what you've attained. But the minute you disrespect me, the minute you abuse me the minute you cross certain boundaries it is done you do not get to demand my respect because you and i are very different we might have similar traits because that is what you wished for way before i even came into this earth and sometimes i look at those traits of mine and i hate them i despise them but what i did 
about that? I took lemons and I made lemonade. I took those characteristics, I took those traits, and I made them positive. I made them work for me. I refused to be another version of you. I refused to pass down toxicity from generation to generation like you have. Because I could have messed things up ages ago. I could have inflicted the same amount of pain, if not more, that you inflicted upon me unto your children. I could have done that, but it never even crossed my mind. I'm speaking about it now because it was a possibility, but it never crossed my mind because I'm not that kind of person. I lead with love. I lead with a pure heart and I'm always open to forgiving. But if you show no remorse and you have the audacity to hide behind our ancestors, my ancestors, and you say, it was not I who said this to you. It was not I who almost offed you. It was not I who spoke doom unto your future. It was our ancestors. Are you kidding me? Do you think I'm still that six-year-old that you used to speak down on? Do you think I'm still that eight-year-old whom you said, I wish you would just curl up and die? I wish you were to just get hit by a car and get out of my face. And I would look at you like this. If that ever happened and pretend I don't even know you. Do you think I'm still that 11 year old that you wanted to strangle to death? Do you think I am still that 13 year old whom you told had no future and would be a disappointment to their parents and the family at large? Oh no, 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 no. You have got it all wrong. I am now a grown woman. I am an academic. I am an intellect. I am a critical thinker. Therefore, I will question things that do not make sense. If your reasoning and your justification and your excuses and explanations do not make sense, it is my right to question that. Everybody has that right. It doesn't take a genius to want to question things that don't make sense. You have to. That is why God created us this way. He wanted us to use our brains. If you think you're going to violate me all these years, treat me as an outcast. Make me feel that Tano, as in, we don't care about you. And everybody is ultimately going to be on my side. Even people who are supposed to protect you are going to be on my side. So you're on your own. And therefore, you are forced to listen to what I tell you. And if you don't, then you are disrespectful. And I demand respect because I'm your elder. What? What? Check your track record. An elder who did what? To who? When? Why? Because I'm not the only one. Your other victims are no longer living your other victims have crossed over, so it's not my story to tell. But we know. Oh, trust me, we know. Your other victims are still alive, bowing at your feet because they fear you. Your other victims are aware of the things you said and did to me, and they are shooketh till this day. They reach out to me till this day and they say, oh my goodness, we know, we are sorry, but they still stick to your side. Why? Because they fear you. I fear nobody. I fear no man, no woman, no spirit, nothing. Because I am anointed, I am protected. I was the chosen one. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. God resides within me. My angels are constantly around me, protecting me. But I'm still a human being. Therefore, I will experience emotions that are meant to be experienced by human beings. I will make mistakes. And I'm the type of person who is open 
to admitting their mistakes. Because I know that I could never be perfect. Because I know that there are some toxicities that I absorbed from you. And I am now bleeding on people who did not cut me. And that is not fair. It is time to heal. This video serves as an outlet. This video serves as a way for me to express myself. Because whenever I do try, I am silenced. I am interrupted. I am told that I am being disrespectful. People deny certain things. People minimize or diminish my pain or cancel it out completely and make it seem like I'm an understand, Wuti, this is how our ancestors work. My ancestors are great. My ancestors are of light. My ancestors promote peace, promote respect for everybody. My ancestors want what's good for me all the time. There's no ancestor of mine who would speak doom unto my future. There is no ancestor of mine who would harm an innocent child and try to off them. That's the reason I'm still alive. They protected me because that's what they do. They protect, they bless, they open my third eye and they let me know when I'm being BS'd. You cannot sell me feces and tell me that they are sugar. I have the ability to discern. I can smell BS from a mile away. I can spot a master manipulator when I see one. You can't run game on me. You can't play games with me. You can't play with me. Honesty is very important. It may be difficult. It may hurt your pride. It may hurt as it should because and I understand that as an adult especially as a Leo it's very belittling very emasculating to be told that you're not perfect to be told Uguti, you have flaws and they're huge but unlike you I'm able to take that I'm able to do some self-introspection and fix whatever it is that is wrong with me so that I don't project, so that I don't hurt other people, so that I don't bleed on people who did not cut me, so that I don't pass down hatred, trauma, anger to future generations, so that I don't build barriers and discomfort between cousins nieces and nephews and unborn children because it's gotten to a point where when I think about my unborn children I'm like there's absolutely no way they could grow around these people or this person or within that environment because I'm not letting them go through what I went through you see I have the power I have the strength I'm equipped with the intellect with the smarts to prevent that and as much as I want peace just like my parents my amazing parents who did everything that they could under the circumstances but they just wanted peace so they told me be quiet move on forgive things will get better pray about it I took their advice I listened to them I was fairly obedient under the circumstances because I could have turned out to be a monster. I really could have. And therefore, it pisses me off when anybody, especially my abuser, tries to paint me as the messed up one, as the bad guy, as a troublesome child who was spoiled. Hell, I felt neglected. I've always felt like an outcast. Nobody protected me. You manipulated everybody to a point where everybody would just... Yebo baba, yebo ma'am. And forget about this child. This child was forced to be a one-woman army and fight her own battles. 
and stand strong and persevere and continue to respect regardless of the outrageous things that were said and done to this child while everybody else listened to you when you had the audacity to badmouth an innocent child to your friends, to family members, to the helpers, to strangers. That's how deep your disdain for me runs. And you expect me to just accept a fairy tale as an excuse, as an explanation? You expect me to accept that our ancestors, my ancestors, the ones that live within me, the ones that are constantly surrounding me, protecting me, blessing me abundantly, are the ones who told you to do what you did to me? An innocent soul? And I'm supposed to take that because if I don't, then I'm being disrespectful and I'm hindering the healing process. How can the healing process not be hindered when it's one-sided? When there's only one person who's being listened to? When there's only one person who's calling the shots imagine having your abuser tell you how to heal run the entire process and tell you don't question me take what i say because if you do then you're disrespectful if you do then i'm cutting you off if you do then you're gonna die if you do then you're gonna die and I'm supposed to believe that those are my ancestors speaking through you? And this is something that we need to understand as the human race. That yeah, boy, there are good and bad ancestors that exist. There are demons too. Now you need to have the ability to discern between those. But one thing I know, one thing that is for certain when it comes to bad ancestors and demons is that both of them are bad. So whether it's the bad ancestors speaking through you or demons, at the end of the day, I'm not accepting that. That is not my portion. That is not valid. Not that anything you've ever said or done could ever be valid. But at least, at least try not to insult my intelligence. It's okay for everybody else to believe you. We're different. We're cut from a different cloth. And nobody experienced what I experienced. I was alone the entire time. Sometimes they would observe this, that, and the third. Sometimes you would even use certain people within the family to find out information about me or to hurt me. But they didn't get to experience what I experienced. So nobody could ever understand how I feel. Nobody has the right to tell me, nope. This is how you should approach it. This is not how you should do it. Oh my goodness, Wendan, I don't have Ibazotinabantu syndrome, Min. The only reason I kept quiet, remained respectful and obedient was because I am that person. I'm a good person, contrary to what you may believe or what you want to believe or what you want other people to believe about me. I'm a good person and I'm, I'm an amazing person, actually. To stomach that for so many years... And you think that after so many decades, you're going to come up to a grown woman and tell her, hey, it was not I who did that. It was your ancestors. Take it or leave it. And if you don't take it, you might die. Do you remember that you used to say that to me all the time? And the problem is, I'm the type of person who remembers everything. I'll tell you the year. The month, the day, the time, what you were wearing, what hairstyle, obunayo, what kick and boboza you were wearing when you thought you could kick and boboza me to my grave. I will tell you that and you will be shooketh if you think you're going to spin a fairy tale. La. If you think you're going to lie to me and I'm just going to take it lying down just like I took it lying down while you were strangling me, trying to kill me. And there's a video that I recorded prior to this one. I only sent it to a handful of people, the people who know exactly what went down, some who don't know much, but who have an idea because they've seen your behavior around me. You see, what you tend to forget is that people observe. They might fear you, so they might not stand up to you. You might have manipulated them into thinking, 
She's the problem child. I'm good, I'm great. You guys need me because I'm the one that our ancestors use as a medium to speak to you and fix your problems and guide you. And people fail to understand what this song is I was perform. Nah, myself, I'm actually a brilliant actress. Man, I'm a brilliant actress. I'm a brilliant actress. Manje nga kukuka ngitu, oh god, wanko siya mi in, lente nyenza yo wen uzofa, goba ufu nugla lel. I can do that. To manipulate people, to manipulate situations, so things work in my favor all the time. But I will never, I would never, because I'm a decent human being and I'm not a narcissist. Another problem we have within our community, where we overlook Certain behaviors, questionable, questionable behaviors. And we just accept, but nah, this person is just like this. Take them as they are. Take them as they come. And if you're smart enough, and if you have the ability, the power to discern that, no, 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 this isn't normal. I will not stomach it. I refuse. Then you're made to be the outcast. If you're the one who has the ability to stand up for yourself who does not fear anything or anyone, then you're made the outcast because now I was just cut her. Unga who shall loco? A hair sias, woodsy when they are loco, and a hanga kumbula, namwang boos, woods, namwang jail goods, nam you what and bogwens, woods, no goods, who goes a goose when they go good, no goods, cotunga, shongobus on cut her. What? So, Mina, I'm supposed to live my entire life holding all of this in and just accepting it and taking it. I've always asked myself, that are valid, that isn't my portion. I refuse because now I'm harboring negative emotions that I don't want. I want nothing to do with that because now you're blocking my blessings. And I can't help it because I am traumatized. Therefore, these demons, these pains need to be confronted so that there can be healing and we can move forward in a positive direction. But that will only happen when people are being truthful, when people are able to humble themselves and respect each other. It can't be one-sided. It has to go both ways. Especially when you're in the wrong. When you're in the wrong and you know it, but you choose to still manipulate the situation and your victim. I, I don't know. Like, I can't make this up. I can't make this up. I actually recorded the conversation that was had. So they could see the hatred that I was seeing. So they could hear the actual devil speak through someone. So they could hear Isindo Ezihasmulisa Umzimba Ezishiwogmina. After that, but I'll move on. I'm gonna double pillar now. Let me focus on my other people, my other minions who are gonna listen to me, no mang bed. Back to square one. I was literally taken back to that child. Who was defenseless, who was silenced. And I remember saying to myself, ha, 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 ha. there you go again, as an adult, letting this person take you there, giving this person the power to make you feel all these negative emotions that you've worked so hard to eradicate. Don't let them win. One thing that, that's for certain, the devil will never win when it comes to me. You can speak doom upon my life. You can threaten Utingizofa. I'm not going anywhere. If anything goes wrong in my life or if I die, it's because it was meant to happen that way. It's not because of your words or because of your ancestors. Never. Kosla. There's absolutely no way. Gilangi corner because of my ancestors. So there's no way. No way. Come up with something better. Don't ever insult my intelligence. And I'm actually being very polite. 
and very respectful. I might sound very passionate or intense right now, but remember, I'm just like you. That's what you wanted. You said you wanted someone, you said you wanted me in particular to be just like you so that people could understand the kind of person that you are. And apparently you're intense, right? You're passionate, right? Well, so am I, but I'm passionate about the truth. I'm passionate about positivity, about light, about peace, about forgiveness, and anything that opposes that, anything that shuts me up and won't let me stand up for myself. Anybody who thinks they're going to continue to victimize me till the end of time, Ufige Epoch Station. Not on my watch. That is not happening, at least not anymore. Not anymore. My parents did not spoil me. My parents did not smother me. I fought my own battles in my own way. God fought my battles. My ancestors fought my battles. Hence, I was removed. Time and again. Further and further and further away. From those people. From those environments. Because they saw what's mm -mm. And I'm a tandingam, and dinami ang tandingam. My parents always gave people the benefit of the doubt at my expense, and I know that it was coming from a good place because peace, akir. But I'm here to change the cycle. We are here to change the cycle. I'm talking to everybody watching this video. Umnani umdala upalat nindao. Let us change the cycle. It is not okay. The things that happen within families. The abuse that goes down, the outrageous things that are said and done to people within families. And they're just meant to stomach it and be quiet about it and not air out the family laundry, dirty laundry. Until when? Because we've tried time and again to do it internally, privately. I gave this person a chance two days ago thinking they've come a long way they've seen the light hence all of this is happening i genuinely thought that this person wanted what i wanted and i forgot what i weigh now you've always been the outcast it's not about you this is all about making sure that i look good that everybody praises me and says oh my gosh siya bonga spanban for bringing the family together for initiating such an amazing powerful process that will allow everybody to open up heal forgive move forward and attract their blessings and you just receive that and say thank you oh thank you it's needed it's important but only when it suits me because the actual person that i did wrong more than anybody within this circle or within this family doesn't get to have a say. And you know what I'll do? If they even think they have the potential or the power to speak their truth, I will cut them off. And as usual, as per norm, I will bad mouth them to everybody and turn everybody against them so that everybody's just like, Kanti Yeni Kinga Yalo. And she will take it. Well, she won't. And for the longest time, I would ask myself, why am I not being protected? But as I previously mentioned, people often don't, they can't relate. They can't protect you if they haven't been in the same situation as Wayne. Now, they can't relate. They can't protect you if, you, if you're constantly strong. If you're always strong and smiling and laughing and bringing positivity all the time, to everybody else even though you're dying inside even though you have secrets that you haven't even shared with them that you haven't even shared with your own parents because that's how deep and dark these secrets are because you want to protect these perpetrators because that's what you were taught because you want to make sure that their children do not hear you speak poorly for the lack of a better term, because these are facts. It's not like bad-mouthing anybody. I'm not trying to step on anybody's toes, hurt anybody, but I'm tired of being hurt. I'm tired. And the only way to relieve myself of this hurt 
is to put it out there. Let it out because it no longer has a home within me. I'm done. I've been tired. I was born. Oh, baby, I was born tired because I was cursed way before I even came into this world. When I was in my mother's womb, I was cursed. How do you live with that? How then are you a sane human being with peace, knowing this information and actually having gone through things that proved? Because yeah, I know. And nobody cares. People are just going to comfort you every now and then privately and then run back. Run back to your abuser. So you're on your own, honey. You're on your own. One thing about me, I'm a truth teller. You can label me whatever you want to label me. I'm a truth teller. And anything that opposes the truth and anything that opposes light, and sometimes I think, hmm, maybe I should cut off everybody. Because really, I just get hurt. I'm forced to rub shoulders with people who hurt me. I'm forced to be in the same environment as people who hurt me continuously. I was just like, man, man, cut on, come on, off. Come on. What's the point, really? But I love my family. I'm not that kind of person, and I don't want to be pushed to that extent. I also understand that people don't share the same experiences as I. That people fear people who have the gift of the gab because they're able to say things the way these people want to hear them. They're able to shape and mold your thinking. They're able to manipulate you and every situation. They're able to use forces so powerful, so deep, so meaningful as our ancestors, as a scapegoat for bad behavior. And they're able to make you believe that this is true. It wasn't me. I wasn't conscious. I was in a trance. There's no way I could have said that. There's no way I could have done that. Even when you can see what I will win. So when you're never going to be held accountable for anything that you do. You're never going to take responsibility for your actions. You're just going to use our ancestors as a shield. Njalo. To justify. Unforgivable. Behavior. I'm tired. There's no way I can accept that. And let your Uti Abantu when you refuse to accept BS. When you refuse to take whatever they say because it doesn't make sense and it's not the truth. Bakdube. In order to hurt you and to show you, Uti, I'm still in control. All along. Don't think, Uti, when I, as a child, you're going to come here and flip the script. I'm still in charge. I still have the power. To turn everybody against you. To make everybody listen to me. Give a move. Because everything that I do and say to these people is amazing. It seems godly. But when uh, you and I know I don't F with you. And you and I both know. I'm going to win. Because. mean. Do you understand how crazy that is? And that's why I understand when some people just cut off their families completely. Because things like these happen and they're forced to just keep quiet and to stomach them and tolerate them. And they just come to a point where there's just this guy. I, 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 I. But I don't want it to get to that point. But also, if you're going to think Dubagwak is going to affect me, <laughs> I've lived my life, my entire life, like the most important stages of my life without you and I realized Uti, I don't need you in actuality I'm much better I'm at peace I'm happier without you because the minute you step into my space the minute you have access to me <gasps> every fiber of my being <gasps> cringes all those events play in my head and I'm forced to just be quiet so it's okay you might think you cut me off, but I actually prayed you away. It's okay. If you want to stand in that, and if that's the hill you're willing to die on, 
because you're that prideful, you're that stubborn, you're that much of a manipulator, then it's okay. Because you don't want to heal, because you don't want to manifest or attract your blessings, because ultimately I'm not the only one who's affected. You are as well. And I don't wish that upon you. I wish you well. I wish you well. I want you to prosper. And I know you should be, oh, you should be soaring. But if this is the hill that you're willing to die on, then people are bound to remain stagnant. I don't want that for myself. Therefore, I will always be open to forgiving. I will always be open to peace. I will always be open to moving forward. But you have to also be there. I can take the horse to the river, but I can't force it to drink. It's going to kick me. And that's exactly what's been happening over and over again. And I refuse to be kicked over and over again. Because what am I? There's absolutely no way. And in conclusion, because there's a lot I could say. In the video that I shared with my close family and friends, I mentioned the tip of the iceberg in chronological order of things that were said and done to me. The tip of the iceberg, because there's a lot more. That if I were to dingita and count and tell you when this happened, how it happened, what was said, what was done, and what were the consequences or the lack thereof, you would be like, how? How was this even allowed? How were these people even able to walk freely and still be in your life and you're still expected to respect them even though they show no remorse whatsoever but expect to go to back mail instead like <sighs> i will never not question something that doesn't make sense to me i will never not question something that does not sit right with my soul but also i will not change my personality i will not make myself a pipsqueak to make you feel comfortable there is absolutely no wengi dalwadanje. I will not get all the answers that I need and the closure that I deserve if I just hold back and say, oh, otherwise it's what I get to lela, ang tuleng la lela, ay ang gabo zilok na magun slupa kung gud lang gungi lang apagat. What? Get out of here. This poor Sami says it's yantanta because umo do yo, yazin. Yo, guys, these battles, yes, Silwana Bantu Esngazi, Uguti Sabenzani. We're fighting generational battles? Are you kidding me? It was your duty to stop that from being passed on to innocent generations. And now, get it is my duty, in conclusion, because I could go on and on and on and on. There's no way I could cover it in one video. There's no way. Guningi. Gatusa. Yet I still have the decency to hold those things back because I want to protect these people's children. I love them. I know they love me too and I know there's a lot of confusion. Who are you going to listen to? Your parent? Or your sibling or your cousin or your whatever? Who are you going to listen to? Who are you going to believe? You know. You can see. That so-and-so is hurting genuinely because you know so-and-so and you know so-and-so would not play or lie about such. But also, this is your parent. So what do you do? Is that not now creating yet another battle? Some more feuds, a whole lot more beef that's going to be passed on now to this generation. And I'm going to stop my kids from seeing certain people playing with certain children. To protect them, not because I'm saying, hey, I have my no, I have love for everybody, but to protect them because there's no way I'd let them go through what I went through. Otherwise, dang sure won't be a singanyam. So I urge you, I urge you guys to flip the script, Gemanj. Let's break the cycle of not speaking about things that are important. To look at to Tula am dana am spilanga you like a where ma where ma wang sha ya lo da where ma Tula am dana am spilanga you like a ya ai ma where ma where ma wang pin da lo ma ma where ma Tula am dana am spilanga you like a Kyo zakube nim guys 
We're creating broken people and we expect them to contribute positively to society, constructively to society, and birth nations and future generations that are going to build this world and change it for the better. How? With such traumas, with such deep secrets and actions and words being swept under the rug. Let's develop a culture of speaking about things that don't sit right with us, speaking about our traumas. Let's teach our children, let's teach each other to respect each other. Respect should never be one-sided. It should never be based on just age or anything else for that matter. Everybody deserves respect. Let's avoid thinking that we're always right. Let's be able to humble ourselves just as you expect people to humble themselves when they talk to you. Humble yourself when people talk to you. What makes you think you shouldn't? Listening is a skill, hang it. Well, you don't have it. So develop that skill. Be teachable. You're not always right. Be able to accept criticism so you can grow. Being old doesn't mean that you have grown. Let that sink in. Relinquish negativity. Allow children to speak their minds. Yes, they should be respectful but they should speak their minds as well. You can't tell me silencing me is a way of teaching me respect. There's like, that, that doesn't make sense. Children ought to speak up. Let's promote peace, love, kindness. Even if you don't like someone, gay, because that happens. You could be related, you don't get to choose your bloodline. You could be family, but ninga tandan. But let's at least be kind to each other because we're human beings. And there's God within us, and we share ancestors. That doesn't make you a powerful person. That's actually quite a weak trait. Because especially when you're in the wrong. But then you also need to be able to admit when you're in the wrong. Because if you always think you're right, then what's the point? Defeats the entire purpose. Of that mentality, Yoguti, if things don't go my way, if you're not going to listen to what I say, then I'm going to cut you off. I'm going to wish you ill. No. Agwenzi waganjalo. Agwenzi waganjalo. Nijalo imi na ingaane. I wisdom, I figing the age. I too have ancestors speaking through me. And I've attended them. They say enough is enough. They too demand respect. They too deserve and demand to be heard. They just want peace. They want forgiveness. They want to bless us collectively. It's not about bruising anybody's ego. Because nothing deletes the fact that you were wrong. Whether you admit it or not, the fact still remains. And those who know, know. And you know. But if you choose to deny that, then you're blocking that process. You're the one hindering that amazing process. If we have ancestors that are so powerful, but who are capable to fix things self why let that opportunity pass us by because sine pride do you not realize that you're cursing yourself by cursing me i just want to ask whoever's watching this video how would you deal with a situation like that how would you deal with a person or people speaking to your child like that speaking doom unto your child's future your innocent child's future wishing death upon your innocent child putting their hands and attempting to off your innocent child how would you deal with that